Hi everyone, and welcome to the next lesson in the series on Django Fundamentals, where I'll be teaching you how to create and connect a Postgres database from AWS. All right. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to go to our settings. So we can go to Taskly, our project uh, settings.py file. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to set up our database configuration here. Now, as of this moment, we are utilizing an SQLite uh, database backend here, as you can see, but we want to go ahead and change our engine, of course, to that of a Postgres database, okay? Now, before we can actually utilize Postgres, we need to, uh, can, we need to install a package. So what I'm going to do is just turn off my server. Now make sure as always that you're in your virtual environment and you want to install a package called, uh, it's called Psycho PG2. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to allow Django to connect to our Postgres database. Okay, so this is sort of a database adapter for Python Postgres. So it will be like so. So you must say pip install, install, and then you're just going to say p, S Y C O P G2. Okay. So it's like Psycho P G2. Okay. So you can just go ahead and install this. So this is a database handler. Okay. So just be sure to install that. Okay. Great. Now, what you can do in the meantime is you can go ahead and type this out here in your code. Okay. So I've already typed in a markup here. I have uh, commented it out for now. Okay. So I just want you to go ahead and just type this out. So you can just leave everything as default here and you're just going to add a few things. So engine and name, okay, those you're already aware of, but you're also going to add user, password, host, and port. So just go ahead and just add this uh, structure and everything. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and log into your AWS account under your IAM user. Okay, so in this case, I'm with John. Now you can go and search for a service called RDS, okay? And it's um, a managed relational database service offered by AWS. So you can go ahead and bookmark this. So you have it there next time, so you don't need to search for it. So let's go to RDS. So let's just wait for this to open up. And we're going to go ahead and create our uh, cloud-based database instance, okay? So let's just wait for this here. And there will be, and as we go along, I will explain and describe to you what you need to do here and what you need to fill in and how everything corresponds. Right, so what we want to do is we want to click here on DB instances. So you want to click on that. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, and we have no instances at the moment. And we want to go ahead and create a database instance. So let's go and create an instance. Okay, so we can now go ahead and scroll down. Okay, so we need to select our engine. Now this is going to be here, so our engine, and we are going to choose Postgres uh, SQL here. Okay, now when it comes to the version, you can decide, but I always like to explain it with thir Postgres 13.4 R1 here. Okay, so I would suggest that you follow the same as me, so you don't have any issues or whatnot. Okay, so on the templates here, you want to choose the free tier, okay? So with the free tier, okay, you're not going to go ahead and pay like a fortune. Okay, so you can scroll down here. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and add your database uh, uh, instance identifier. So this is what your database will be called in AWS, okay? Right, so now we need to go ahead and set a username here. So in this case, I'm just going to use my name here. And then you would need to enter your master password. Okay, and confirm your password. Okay, perfect. Now, in terms of where this will go in our Django project, so our username here will simply be under user and our password will be under password. Okay, so in this case here, I'm just putting my uh, username and then here I'm just going to, in Siri, put my password. Right, so let's move on to setting up our AWS. Okay, so that's done. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we can go ahead and scroll down here. Okay, so I can uh, explain it a bit to you as we go. So we're using a T3 micro instance. So this is eligible for the free tier. 
Okay, so storage, we're going to use a uh, general purpose SSD. The storage will be 20 gig here. We can, however, go ahead and change this if you would like, but that is the minimum. Okay, storage scaling. So if, for example, uh, we reach uh, our storage capacity limit, we're going to enable storage auto scaling. So it's going to auto scale automatically for us. And this will be our threshold before it, our database decides to auto scale. Okay, so this is all good. Okay, this is great. So we can just leave the defaults here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to enable public access. So we can just say yes here. Okay, so just be sure that you assign yes. So we will then connect to our database via an endpoint. Okay, everything else you can leave here. Now, an important thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and click on additional configuration. Just be sure that you're connecting on port 5432. And this will mean that we connect here to port 5432. Okay, perfect. Okay, so everything's right here. The authentication is fine. Okay, you can leave this as is. Okay, and what you need to do here under the additional configuration setting, you want to click on this and you want to give your database a name. So here I'm going to call it demo underscore one. And that name will be configured here. Just like so. Okay, so just be aware of that. Now in the meantime, uh, with engine, okay, we need to configure this very similar to what we've done here with SQL Lite. So all we need to do is we can copy this here paste this in here. And since we are using a Postgres database, okay, we can just go ahead and type in here at the end, Postgres, just like so. All right, so just be, uh, bear in mind that we just need to copy this here and switch out SQLite for Postgres since we are indeed using a Postgres database. Okay, so bear that in mind. Okay, now here we would need to put in our endpoint. Now our endpoint will only be generated once our RDS instance uh, is live. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on our RDS instance and set it up. All right, so we can go ahead now and create our database. Just before we do it, just be sure, okay, that you are using the free tier here. Okay, so to double check on that, just scroll up and just double check that you're choosing the free tier because if you're using uh, the production tier or the dev test tier, you will pay. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so go ahead and create the database. All right, so this will take a while to provision. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video here and once our database is status is showing available, I will resume. So as of this moment, it is creating and this will take some time. So what I'm going to do is pause and I'll be right back when it's done. All right, so as we can see, our database is now available and it has been created. And as I mentioned earlier, our database identifier name, we can see here is database one. Great. Now we can go ahead and click on our database here. And what we want to do is we want to scroll down and you'll see here it has given us an endpoint. Now our endpoint here will be our host name. So what we can do is we can go ahead and copy this endpoint here. Okay, just paste it there. And there we go. So that is our endpoint. Now we will encounter a slight issue. Now to solve this, we would need to edit our security group. Now to do this, we can click here. And what we want to do is we want to edit our security group to allow anybody to, you know, connect to our database. All right. Now what we, to do this, we would need to go to our EC2 management console and we'll see here the security group for our database, which is just like this. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and edit this date, this security group. So we want to click on it. Okay. And if we scroll down, we'll see that we have our inbound rules. Okay, and sometimes it is set and sometimes it isn't always set. Now, what you want to do is you want to edit your inbound rules. Now, I'm going to assume that this wasn't automatically set for you. So I'm going to delete the records. I'm going to delete these, this and this. Now, I'm going to leave this one here. So make sure you don't change it. So I'm going to add a rule, which is going to be all traffic. And another one to allow all traffic. And I want to allow it in the CIDR block of this CIDR uh, group here. And we want to choose this CIDR group here. Okay. So we want to make sure that we allow traffic from all IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. So be sure that you have these two um, 
inbound rules here. The one here is by default, so please do not uh, delete it. It is a custom security group, so make sure that you leave it here, okay? So please don't delete it. The ones that I removed were only these two here, and I just re-added it in the event that you don't have this already attached to your security group. Now you can save the rule, and that's it. Perfect. Now we will allow inbound traffic. So we now should see traffic from IPv4 and IPv6 addresses and then the default version here, which uh, was created by default when we created our database. Okay, perfect. So everything is set and ready here. So we are done with the database part. So now let's go ahead and configure everything as we should. So here we're in our database and what you would need to do now is I just advise you to just uh, comment out your SQL light database here. So just comment it out like so. And I just want to put a heading here. So this will be a SQL light database. And here I'm just going to above just put here Postgres database. Okay, so just distinguish between your two databases. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in my password. I'm going to close this file here and then we're going to go ahead and test this out. Okay, so just go ahead and set everything up like as follows and you're going to want to uncomment this here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do just that. So now before we actually move on further, I just want us to make sure that we delete all of our uh, objects. So if we go to our admin page, so let me actually open a tab here. Yeah, it's just good and safe to do so. So let's turn on our server. Let's turn this on. Okay, so we are, okay, we need to make sure that SQLite is on here. So let's just keep this here. Okay, let's just reload and there we go. Okay, so just for the meantime, we just want to remove our record from our SQLite database. Okay, so we can in the meantime, just remove test two. So do not delete your super user, just delete the default one here. Profiles and tasks. Now we don't need to do this, but it's a good idea to do it. So let's log out. All right, so we can just say log in again. Great. Okay, so what we can do now is we can now go ahead and uncomment this now. We can comment this, I mean, like so. And just proceed to just uncomment this here, like so. Okay, with your password and everything. So what I'm going to do is just pause the video, add my password, and then we're going to go and just close this actually. In, in the program. And then we're going to migrate uh, all of our uh, installed apps to our Postgres database. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just do just that. Okay, so make sure you added everything and then the next step would be to go ahead and migrate everything which I'll do. I just wanna go ahead and add my password and then we'll go straight to here. So make sure you've configured everything as follows. All right, so let's go ahead and set everything up. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we just simply want to migrate everything. So we are migrating to a new database now, our Postgres database. So we can say make migrations. Okay, let's do that. This will take uh, a bit of time. So just bear in mind that. Well, it can take some time. Okay, that's great. Now we can go ahead and migrate. So we're going to migrate everything to our new database. Okay, so this can take a bit of time. So the fact that it's running slow is a good idea because we have a bit of latency, but this proves the point that we are connected to our Postgres database. Okay, so let's just wait for everything there. And what we're going to do afterwards, we would have to go ahead and create a new soup user since we are using our Postgres database. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so let's just wait there. So it's going to, add all of our migrations for us and set everything up. And then once we've created our super user, we're going to go ahead and create a simple record. And then we're going to analyze that in our admin.py to see it uh, through our new database so that everything's running as it should be. Okay, so just keep that there in mind. Okay, there we go, it's done. Perfect, now just to test this, we want to say python manage.py run server. So let's see if there were any errors in the process. So let's just run the server. Okay, that's looking good. Perfect, so if we were to just refresh here. Okay, this is looking good. So everything is as it should be. All right, great. 
So it's all connected and everything's looking great. Now, what we want to do now is we just want to create some a dummy record, you could say. So I just want to say register and here I'm going to register a user. But before we do that, let's create our super user, first of all. So let's just in the program here and we need to say Python manage.py create super user. Okay. Okay. Now the default is Arno. Now the re I'm going to leave this as, as Arno as the default because you cannot have two um, usernames that are the same in a database. Now, if this allows us to keep Arno, that means we're using a Postgres database as well. It's another indication. As we can see there, it's perfect. Now the email address, I'm just going to say test at example.com. Password, make sure you add your password. Perfect. So we can now run our server and we're going to log in with our user, super user. Okay, so let's just run, make sure it's on. Great, now let's log in. Okay, it's log in. Okay, and the fact that it's taking time is, is also a good sign. So we're now logged in to our Postgres database. And of course we will have no records or anything. So we would need to go ahead and create a few. So we'll only have our super user. So let's go ahead and do just that. Okay, so we can now register a user. So I'm gonna say test, test at gmail.com, enter a password, re register the user. Okay, right, so that's it. So we can just double check here and see if our user in fact was created. So if we log in, Let's log in with our username and our password. Okay, let's just wait for this. Okay, so the fact, like I said, that it's slow. Okay, there we go. So we have successfully now integrated our um, Postgres database with AWS. Okay, so that's it. And I hope you liked it. So this is how you would go ahead and do, do just that. All right, so thank you for watching.